So you clicked on this video because you're considering staying off property on your next Disney World vacation and you're wondering why I'm saying you might not should do that. And so in today's video, we're gonna talk about that. On one of our recent trips, we stayed at off-property resorts. We've stayed at them various other times too. But on our most recent time, I had the toss up between this particular resort and Disney's All-Star Sports. And All-Star Sports doesn't get a good rep, but I'm wishing I would have picked it. So let's, uh, let's just jump into the video. Now I am no stranger to the fact that Disney World vacations are really, really expensive. We've been going to Disney World for over 10 years now, and I understand the want to kind of cut corners and save money here and there as you can, but we're gonna chat about a few of the reasons why it might not be in your best interest for your family, and overall, you may regret the decision like we did. So when it comes to the off-property resorts that we've stayed at, they have definitely been Disney approved, which is great. And we did get the perk of still receiving early entry, which I mean, that's nice, but let's talk about some of the things that they lack in. So one of the things that a lot of these off-property resorts lack is transportation. And while yes, a lot of them do offer free transportation, if you're like us and you are a family, you fly to Florida, you don't drive. I personally hate driving. Like, I don't mind the drive there. It's that 12 hour drive back in that car that gets me every single time. And I am just like ready to bang my head against the window. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not ready to leave my vacation. I don't wanna be going home. And so this is just like, <sighs> I don't like this at all. So that is just my quick rant about driving. I'm not a fan of it, but if you're like us and you like to fly to Florida and you want that quick transportation, you want that travel day, you want to enjoy a lot of your resort on your days that you are traveling to and from Disney World, then flying definitely is a bit easier. But. I digress again. So one of the things that a lot of these off-property resorts lack is transportation. And while a lot of them do market as having free transportation to all four parks, it's always, there's a catch. It's either it runs every single hour. And so if you miss that bus by a few minutes, you've got to wait another 55, 50, whatever minutes until the next bus comes for you. If you're still wanting to strictly utilize that free transportation or they run on a strict schedule of okay they run at 2 15 and 4 15 and 3 35 and like whatever it has a strict schedule quick interruption from today's video to introduce myself hi my name is ashley and on this channel i share tips tricks and hacks for taking toddlers and little kids to disney disney vacation planning tips as well as travel tips and vlogs from all of our adventures along the way so if that is content that you're into you'll want to click the red subscribe button and if you're loving this video and kind of getting a sight and insight between on property and off property and what is the best fit for you and your family then click the thumbs up button down below it really does help to support the channel and let's jump back into it. case in point for us on a recent trip we stayed at the Hilton Signia and this isn't to bash Hilton and the Signia or any of the other resorts they're lovely hotels and they're a nice place to sleep but this is where I have a problem with them and their transportation. So case in point was we were spending our day at Hollywood Studios. We are a midday nap family. We have a one and a half year old and a three and a half year old for those of you that are new to my channel. Um, and we like to go back and let them rest in the room. We like to rest like for us, for them, for everybody. It's just how our family thrives at Disney. So we like to do that. But when it comes to the bus schedule for Signia, we had to be out at the bus stop by 11.15 a.m. because that's when the bus was coming that we needed to take to get back to our resort. We usually try to, by 12 o'clock, be headed back, and the next bus wasn't going to be running until 2.15 that afternoon, and we did not want to wait that long. We're like, that is, we should be like well into nap time by 2.15, so I don't want to wait for that, so that really cut our morning short. We had to very quickly eat breakfast and take it with us, or eat lunch, rather, and take it with us, and I felt like we weren't quite ready to go but if we would have waited you know how it is if you have kids if you know you know that there's that sweet spot between okay we're not quite ready but we're getting closer to being ready and we're too far gone and if we would have waited until 2 15 well, 
my girls would have been way too far gone. And so that is one of the issues that I had was their strict schedule. And it came like that for a lot of different instances. That evening, we had to be sure and see the first showing of Fantasmic that was running two shows that night, one at 7.15 and one at 9 p.m. because the final bus that took us back to our resort was 9.15 p.m. And at that time, we I'm not a fan of Ubers. I'm just not comfortable with them. We have not had a good Uber experience and there's no way I'm getting my kids in a car. My anxiety would just be through the roof. And at that time, the minivans weren't being offered to go to the off property nearby resorts, um, like say the Signia Hilton. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. So your mileage may vary with that, but it really limited our schedule to we had to be extremely strict on this is when we have to see the show we can't wait and see the nine o'clock show and if we weren't in line or we didn't do the phantasmic dinner package we just would have had to say hmm We'll have to skip Fantasmic this time because we need to get back to our resort. So there were a lot of instances like that, even going to Disney Springs, we needed to like make it back for a certain bedtime. And so that just really limited our schedule of instead of hopping on a Disney bus, which comes every 15, 20 minutes or so, and being able to, okay, a little more flexibility in our days of when we would come and go, it really tied us down and made it very, very strict. So if you are going into this and you're staying there, just know, go ahead and start looking up the bus schedule so that you can kind of get an idea and plan your times around that. And even be sure I would set even an alarm on your phone if you were like, we've got to be on this bus to be back or you have to go to a reservation or whatever, then definitely know that. Another instance is be sure to allow enough travel time going to the parks. Like for us, when we were going back that afternoon, we needed to be back at the resort or back at the Hollywood Studios Park by a specific time because we had a dinner reservation. So our dinner reservation was at 4.40 p.m. and we were able to get on a bus at, I believe, 3.15 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So we had over an hour and a half, but on this instance, we had to not just go straight from our Signia Resort to Hollywood Studios. We had to first go to Magic Kingdom to do a driver swap. And then from there, we had to go to Epcot and then to Hollywood Studios. So we literally got to Hollywood Studios and through security, through the turnstiles and to our restaurant right as it was 4.40. So it took almost that entire over almost we're about an hour and a half. My math is failing me on time right now, but about an hour and a half to get back to the park. So that was just a lot of time. We could have been there much, much faster if we were doing Disney transportation. So if you're like us and you enjoy flying and you want to utilize the free transportation and you just, that's one way that you're like cutting in your budget is you're not gonna do the rental car and you don't wanna do, um, constantly use Ubers or taxis or even minivans. All of those things do add up with all the little kachings here and kachings there it adds up really quickly. So for us, that's just one way that we like to save and we enjoy using Disney transportation. We're oddly like into the Disney buses. We really like it. My girls love it. And it's just one of those, it's part of the Disney bubble for us. You don't drive, you just, we enjoy that. But that is something that I want you to be aware of. That way you're not kind of caught off guard. I knew there was a schedule when we booked, but it definitely, they constantly are changing it. So what you see six months out when you're booking it may not be the same schedule that you see just a week or so before in your actual schedule. So just lock that away for future reference and just something to know if you are considering one of these resorts, that's something to think about. Another thing about these off-property resorts is their lack of dining. A lot of times it's just a quick little like grab and go, like you get muffins or something like that. A lot of them, if you are within the Disney bubble, they're not having a continental breakfast. So you don't have that free breakfast feature like you would think of at some of the off property resorts. Some of them have them, some of them don't. A lot of them don't. And it's just like pastries and muffins and you get your orange juice, but you have to pay for everything. And then their other options are either like hotel bar food or going to their sit down like for restaurants so there's not a lot of like in between they don't have that quick service like the Disney resorts have so if you are a quick service kind of family you like to do your mobile order and go in and have your breakfast in the morning and or do something when you're picking up for lunch or dinner then you really are kind of limited when it comes to those options as well and then another con of staying at an off-property resort is you pay for parking 
twice. And here's what I mean. So if you are renting a car, say you pick one up at MCO when you fly in, or even if you're driving your own vehicle, you not only have to pay the fee for parking, which is usually around $25 or more at a lot of these off-property resorts at your hotel or your resort, you'll also have to pay when you go to the parks, which can be $25 plus depending on what kind of like level of parking if you do standard parking or if you do the like premium parking or whatever that you choose to do. So you're gonna spend at least around $50 a day in nothing but parking fees. So if you are saving say $50 a day on your room, you may be spending that same 50 in transportation and parking fees. So that's something else to keep in mind when you're budgeting for your resort. Always add in all of those extra fees that you're gonna incur with staying off site versus staying on site because there's a lot of little hidden ones so be sure to check that before you press that book button. And another disadvantage to staying at an off property resort is you don't get early entry and I know it's 30 minutes and you think oh what's 30 minutes gonna get me it can actually get you a lot more than you think. It will be able to, a lot of times you can get into at least one big attra attraction and then one minor attraction, or you can get through a couple within that 30 minutes depending on the season and how busy or not busy that it is. And it can definitely make or break your day of if you are not wanting to spend money on Genie Plus, this can really be a huge benefit to getting in those like harder to get more popular attractions without that 60 plus minute wait. Now the next downside to staying off property is your Disney dining booking and that whole process. So if you stay on property, you get the 60 day dining window and you get the same thing off property. But here's the perk of staying on property versus off is when it comes to your Disney reservation whole making process. If you stay on property, you get your 60 days. So you get to book 60 days out plus 10. So you're getting to book all of your vacation days as long as you're not staying over 10 days at Disney World. So you can go in and every single day that you are making reservations, you can go through that process and book everything and you just one morning you get up and you book it all and you're done. And you're not having to worry about getting up all the time. A con to staying off property is you do still get that 60 day booking window but it's for each individual day. So you're gonna have to wake up every day that you want a dining reservation. You're gonna have to wake up 60 days from that day and be ready to go at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to book that reservation. So it's just another thing to keep in mind. Your vacation planning process is a lot smoother even if you're staying on property versus off property. And the same goes for all those enchanted extras that they have like Bippity Boppity Boutique and the fireworks dessert parties, things like that. Any special ticketed things like that that you can add on to your ticket and your day. You have to book those at 60 days out instead of being able to have that window. So say you want Bippity Boppity and you want to do it later on in your trip as like a way to cap the end of the trip, your last Magic Kingdom day, you're gonna do Bippity Boppity and Cinderella's Royal Table. You won't be able to have that advantage of booking so early if you're staying off property. So I hope that makes sense, but it can definitely just make things a lot easier. Now when it comes to Genie Plus and staying off property, it's relatively the same with one caveat. So you still can buy Genie Plus and book your first selection with purchasing the Genie Plus for the day at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Disney World Time. But the difference is say for Cosmic Rewind, when Tron opens here in a few weeks, that kind of thing, you won't be able to have that 7 a.m. booking advantage for buying those individual attraction selections. For those that are staying off property, you'll have to wait until park open. So 9 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever. So a full hour of selling has gone on. And a lot of times those sell out within the hour, especially these new popular attractions. Cosmic Rewind goes really, really fast. And Tron is going to go even faster these first few months that it's available because it's the new popular attraction and, well, everybody wants to ride it. And then the last thing is honestly staying on property is just way more magical. And I know that sounds weird, but there's something to be said about having that whole Disney bubble experience and not having to worry about transportation and having all of the amenities that the Disney resorts offer, the theming that is so, so much fun. So if your kids are really into Disney World and they're really into all of the characters, then you can get a lot more theming and options there for kind of the magical feel at a regular Disney resort. So 
I don't know. It's up to you. You guys make the decision that is best for your family, but I wanted you to kind of know our thoughts and like how our experience went for staying off property. So suffice it to say, we are on property people. We have done both a lot over the years and suffice it to say, we are just on property people. Now, even if I have to stay at a value resort, a lot of times I will pick that over an off property hotel now all the time. So wanted to share that you guys to be armed with the knowledge of some of the different just kind of cons of staying off property that sometimes you don't think about. So hope that kind of jogged your memory and got you started on creating your Disney budget and planning. But if you want to know some of my favorite Disney resort picks, you can tap on this video right over here and see all of the classes from both value all the way up to deluxe villa and all the categories in between of which one my picks are. And I'll see you over in that video.